The Torchlight games are pretty good ARPGs, but they always had a fundamental problem. They had no interesting classes. Not a single class is capable of summoning anything, so I never bothered to play them. I was also mildly put off by the cartoonish style because I liked my stuff dark and bleak, so I gave these games a wide berth and ignored them. About a year ago I became aware of the Synergies mod for Torchlight 2, which adds a necromancy class. The class is good, but not perfect. It lets you have a large army and a lot of variety with the minions you can summon, which is really good. But the summoner isn't squishy enough for my liking, and I also feel that the minions are a tad weak. You begin with character creation, where you get to choose your class and appearance. The fun part is choosing your pet. There's a range of options for many different kinds of animals and undead, but you can also choose a paladin as a pet, which I found quite amusing. In the end, I chose the head crab pet because he's just so cute, especially the walk. When he attacks, he also makes a cute little sound. In any case, the pet choices are diverse and interesting, so I think they've done a good job here on the pets. The pet is probably your best minion. It can be equipped with many items to make it more potent, and it has its own inventory so you can load it up with junk you can't carry. It also does a decent chunk of damage to enemies. Not an impressive amount, but a bit better than your average minion. The first minions you can get are skeletons and zombies. The skeleton is human sized and has a sword and shield, and the zombies are like a bunch of angry children. They're small and fast. The effectiveness of both minions in battle is not super impressive in my opinion. It's not entirely their fault because in this mod, your necromancer has to be active in attacking enemies as well because every hit you land on an enemy helps to fill a green bar at the bottom of your screen. The green bar increases the amount of damage your minions do, and if it's not full, your minions will seem quite useless. So you've got to be doing as much fighting as possible without stopping, so that your minions are fighting at their best. I don't enjoy this very much. I want my minions to be fighting for me, and I prefer to take a support role managing them. If you don't stay active, and keep attacking, you'll find that your minions become very lousy in combat, which is a shame. At the beginning of the game you start with this purple skull skill, which throws a bunch of skulls at the enemy. I never invested any points into this skill at all, and by the time my character was level 18, I had multiple points invested into my minion skills. Also many points invested into the same skills to make the minions as strong as possible, and also points invested into the generic sort of minion improvement skills that would increase their health and damage. At this point, I thought that my purple skull ability was still dealing more damage to enemies than all of my minions combined. Pretty annoying. The way that you have to be constantly throwing skulls makes it very difficult to tell how much work you're doing and how much work the minions are doing, but I believe the majority of the DPS is coming from the necromancer and not from the minions. You have to wait several levels before you can get a new kind of minion, and in the meantime you can put points into zombies and skeletons to make them better, or invest points into the generic minion improvement skills like Enrage Undead or Bolster Undead. Alternatively, you can go and grab skills like Bone Armor or Bone Needles. I deliberately ignored such spells because they don't interest me. I'm here for the minions and nothing else, so I improved them instead. Another thing I noticed during my playthrough of this mod is that the minion counter at the bottom of the screen is very unreliable. It'll often report the wrong amounts of minions. It'll tell you you've got two skeletons, but you've only got one. It'll tell you you've got five zombies, but you've only got four. It might say you've got three zombies, but you might have four zombies. All kinds of stuff like that, which makes it very difficult to tell which minions you have, and which ones have died and need replacing. Because the indicator is so inaccurate, I tend to just resummon everything after a fight to make sure everything is there. I've also witnessed that the indicator will tell you that you have a minion, for example a skeleton, but in actuality you have no skeleton at all. So from the looks of things it really can't be trusted. It's a bit annoying, but it's not the end of the world either. Later on you can get the Lich minion. He's very tall and has a skull helmet and a flail. He seems happy in melee combat with his flail, and in rage combat he likes to launch golden orbs of stuff at the enemy. According to the spell description, he's also buffing the other minions somehow. I'm not sure if that's from some kind of aura, or a spell that the Lich casts himself. I haven't witnessed him doing this so it might just be a passive bonus. 
One of my favorite minions are the death dolls. These dolls are poisonous and spawn in large groups, and you get more and more dolls with each skill point invested. They're also pretty cute. They make funny little noises, and they die very quickly, but they seem to do their job fairly well. I've noticed, or at least I think I've noticed, a good increase in DPS while they're present. The Spectral Dragon is a pretty nice minion. It looks like a dragon skeleton with a ghostly body around it. It has some kind of charge ability, so it closes the enemy really quickly. It's a little bit difficult to gauge how effective he is, but I do know that he seems to die fairly quickly. The Spore Horde spell summons a few floating creatures that hurl poison at the enemy. They're pretty good minions actually, one of the best. They hang back throwing their globs of poison at the enemy, and they do pretty well for themselves. They look a lot like jellyfish in my opinion. You can also get the Undead Fury minion, which looks like a floating female zombie. She looks a bit like she might have stuck her head in the blender or something, because she's having a pretty bad hair day. She floats around and uses rapid attacks, and it seems like she's mostly fine as a minion. Nothing too remarkable, just decent. My main problem with all of these minions is that they often seem barely noticeable. What I mean is, they die really fast, and while you sort of notice their absence a bit, it's not that apparent that they're gone. You're still hurling your purple death skulls and are dealing most of the damage anyway. The reanimation skill grants you a timed minion. It looks a lot like a little zombie, but just a bit pinker, and it lasts maybe 20 seconds, I'm not sure. With a huge swarm of existing minions, you'd have a pretty hard time noticing the little guy, but you'd be punished for using him. Every second you aren't throwing those purple skulls or attacking with your main weapon is a second that's not spent to maintain that glowing green bar and to ensure maximum minion damage. With this in mind, it's hard for me to imagine a proper use for this reanimation skill. Now it's time to give the mod a score. I'm going to give this a 5 out of 10. The best things about this mod is the minion variety and the huge swarm of different minions that you can summon. The worst thing about the mod is how ineffectual these minions seem to be. They do contribute to your DPS a bit, sure. They also soak up some damage that would otherwise be dealt to you. But if you compare these minions to other games like Diablo 2 or Grim Dawn, they feel very underpowered in my opinion. I feel like the caster has been given too much power. You're doing all the work, and your minions seem to be just along for the ride. They're like a swarm of gnats to buzz and distract the enemy, until you decide to properly kill them by throwing your purple skulls again. Just to prove my point, here's my level 18 necromancer who's invested points in nothing but minions and skills that improve minions. I'm going to just sit back and do nothing and see what happens to these minions. First you'll notice that all the most powerful minions die off. The Spectral Dragon, the Undead Fury, the Lich, all these powerful ones are the first to die. The zombies are among the last to die, they hang in there for quite a while. At the end, only the Spore Horde remains, because it hangs back, throwing spores. Then you can see me progressing forward, minionless, and killing the enemy with a level 1 ability that I never invested any additional points into. However, not every necromancer is like I am. Some of you may appreciate a more powerful caster. There's always been the necromancers that enjoy the non-minion aspect side of things, and they might rejoice at this mod's mechanics. Probably the same necromancers that used Bone Spear and Poison Nova in Diablo 2. Even though I didn't enjoy this mod very much, I encourage you to check it out if what you've seen interests you. Despite the poor score I've given it, this is a quality mod and it deserves attention. It's just been designed around a more active necromancer. If only the minions were a bit more powerful, I'd still be playing it. But for now I'm going to return to Grim Dawn.